So as things are quiet right now for me, mainly because I've got a, a seriously bad back. Um, I haven't actually done any work in the um, workshop for about a week. Um, I thought I'd do a tour of my CNC plasma machine. This machine I built five years ago and it's been in constant use, daily use pretty much um, since then. Um, I've had a few requests about how it was constructed and put it this way, it's not pretty. However, um, more than meaning that it's evolved over time um, to the point that you see it now. I'll go through the features, or the th rather I should say I'll go through what's changed over time um, and you can see the uh, remnants of that. It really is looking pretty scabby at the moment because uh, the water table has fully evaporated. It's normally virtually up to the top. You can see the uh, the white crystals there on the on the table. That's actually bicarbonate of soda, which I effectively use to prevent the tray from rusting. Um, but what it does do is it rusts the galvanized steel. It's only surface rust at this stage, but at some point I'm going to have to replace all of that. And I have a sump there because there is a slight leak from the um, table. So I'll just let it drain down into that tank and then later on we'll uh, pump it back up into the tank using that little pond pump there. But anyway, so to go through the electronics which are normally covered up incidentally, uh, we have a um, an 8 amp linear power supply, four steppers, that's one for the Z, one for the Y and two for the X. As you see that, DM542s, controlling the NEMA 23 steppers. We have a My Plasma CNC controller, which is connected via USB to the laptop. And that's the My Plasma CNC software there. I'm using NEMA 23 steppers. These are a stepper that I've had trouble sourcing since I purchased them. Um, be able to make out the number on the side there. But that any stepper will work, will, will work pretty much really. Um, just do your research and match it to your stepper driver. And uh, these have, as I say, these have been reliable. Um, I've redone wiring from time to time. Uh, what you'll occasionally, what you will occasionally get are hot connections. You're putting quite a few amps through the uh, the wiring wiring on any CNC or any CNC of this size. Um, um, means you get a hot connection over time and sometimes these things will actually melt. I actually have a thermal camera which I reviewed on a, a previous YouTube video which I use to uh, check for hot connections. It's very effective at that. You can very quickly see where a hot connection is and change it out. It just means you end up with judder on your uh, cut. You get, I suppose it's interference. Ultimately it'll stop working and you might get a small fire. But um, yeah, if you can solve any of those it's a good thing to do. One of the other good things that I've found about the My Plasma CNC controller is that it comes with a um, an omic detection system. So instead of using a, a Z height switch, it checks the um, the resistance of the head to the metal. Um, which means that it, it, you can work out the height based on the ohms. Um, but effective, it has its, it has, it's not perfect, it has its problems in that um, you can get a false reading. Like currently I'm getting a false reading because there's a bit of, bit of slag going onto the tip. Um, which means that you get a red. You can see on my laptop screen here, it'll show it red. That means that it's interference with the, uh, you got a short basically on your tip just got to clean it out and that can become very frustrating um, if you get water on the tip it'll have the same effect um, but once it goes some days it'll go I can do a sheet or two at a time a whole sheet with with small cuts 
not have a problem. On other days, it happens every three or four cuts, which can drive you mad <laughs> over time. And there's no, there doesn't appear to be any rhyme or reason to it. Like you can clean the tip as much as you like, but you'll still get the occasional interference or short on the tip. So this is my Z-axis. So I use inductive limit switches, which are non-contact. Um, there used to be a micro switch on there. I thought it was still on there, but it seems to have gone missing. But anyway, the, the, the head had the ability to be, uh, is set, had the ability to move separately, which it actually no longer does. But anyway, it moves up and down the z-axis using the uh, NEMA 24 stepper motor there. Pretty simple really. Actually quite easy to build. I mean you don't need uh, need much to make to build one. Um, basically two linear rails. And then I've got four linear guides. And then there's a... Um, actually good this this has actually got a plastic which I made it has a plastic t-nut and then uses Acme threaded screw driven by the stepper on my machine as with most CNC builds the long axis is your x-axis y-axis is the short axis and um, the y-axis on this machine just moving moving so it's closer has gone through many changes. Um, my first idea of building one of these was to use rack and pinion. And you can see the rack and pinion track still under there. And I had a different design for the, um, for the Y carriage. Uh, but I had to give up on it on the end. I was just getting too much vibration. There was no way I could easily at least position the, the stepper motor to be perfectly parallel with the um, with the rack, meaning that you got vibration as it went along in inaccuracy. So I couldn't have that. So one day, in a fit of panic, really, I <laughs> had a lot of work to do. I just came up with a very simple. I think it's T5 belt actually. T5 belt on a T5 pulley with a custom made block, I'll show you that on the other end. Um, she's just sim very simply and, and crudely attached to the carriage with a tech screw and then runs through a pulley on the other end. I'll just take you over there and show Very much like a 3D printer. Runs through another T5, T5 pulley at the other end and then I I machined up some threads here so you can adjust the, the tracking of the of the belt and I've got that down to a fine art now and that's actually been that way for probably three years. Working really well. Uh, for linear rail I uh, used conventional supported linear rail on the y-axis blocks in there and then there's another one on the other side as well just to give it stability and that works quite well but to uh, get a length long enough to do the x-axis is expensive and messy and why do you need it well you've got um the, C the, the cnc and the, the the omic detection on the cnc will uh, compensate for will compensate for any uh, irregularities in the steel. So the rails don't really need to be perfectly parallel to your material. So have, using square box section for the uh, x-axis to run along just seemed obvious to me. Um, so what I did was I have, these are actually roller skate wheels uh, with sealed bearings. And there's one there, one at the other end, and then I have two that run along the side. You can see the marks on the on the rail there. 
two that run along the side. Never had a problem with them. Bearings are the original bearings. This is, I Lord knows how many kilometers the machines run up and down the x-axis over the time, but there uh, must be a few. And with the dust and the water, you'd have thought that they'd give an issue, but it's been perfect, no problem at all. So this is my setup for the x-axis. We have a NEMA 23 stepper, which goes into a, uh, a plate, and that runs. Oh, there's the dog. Hello, dog. Uh, to a T5 pulley and a belt up to another T5 pulley and then to the pinion for the rack. And you can see the, the rack there. <laughs> Looking pretty gully, that's actually grease. Difficult to know what to do with that, but I've never had an issue and it doesn't appear to have worn any. Occasionally these belts will stretch and I have to keep an eye on that. They sort of kind of don't necessarily run true to the pulleys, uh, but they're cheap and I keep a few of them in stock. The tension for the, the motor actually uses just to screw one end as a, pull, as a pivot one end is a pivot and then the other end is kept slightly loose with a spring. It just keeps enough tension to uh, keep the, the pinion on the rack and give it a little bit of free play. But a dirty system that works quite well. So this is my arrangement for air. Um, I started with a smaller compressor and given the time that the CNC can sometimes run, um, which can be up to half an hour, um, it killed that compressor pretty quickly. It even had a silent compressor. It was an AEG, I think. That lasted less than a year and I managed to claim that back under warranty. This one's been good. It's been here for now probably three years. Um, it's a Renegade 320, um, made by a company called Trade Tools in Australia, under the band brand Renegade. Um, this has been reliable, I'm happy with it. It doesn't run continuously, which is important and gives a fair amount of air. Um, it's the largest compressor you can get <coughs> being triple head on a single phase supply, uh, 15 amp that is. That runs to a, a refrigerated chiller. And that's a SMC. It says SMC hair dryer. I can see, I can see that the flash isn't too very. And it is an IDF A6E. Again, been reliable. Been there about three years. Um, it was something like two thousand dollars at the time. That included the filters, the Micron filters, which I've never had to change uh, because I run it through multiple water traps and uh, filters to try before it gets to. Um, to the edge, to the uh, chiller. In the past I tried a, a system that would go up the, the shed wall made of copper pipe. I think we've all been there with those. They're, they have some merit um, and they're cheap to make, but in this climate, which is very humid, um, it just wasn't working. And if you get water in your air supply to the plasma, um, it'll blow the tips out. The plasma itself, is a Hypertherm 45 XP and that's adequate, more than adequate for the job that I do. I originally tried a uh, Unimig 45, that wasn't as good um, and to set it up for, uh, for CNC purposes was expensive, the machine torch was expensive and you needed to do some extra wiring to uh, have the, the plasma controller turn the arc on and off. So this was a better solution. So they're, they're not cheap, but they, um, but they are good. So just to give a little bit of context, this uh, machine is located in Queensland. We're halfway up the coast of Queensland. Uh, this means we operate the machine in a very um, humid environment. 
uh, which means metal rusts extremely quickly and we get a lot of humidity, hence the, uh, the chiller as I explained previously um, for the air. The uh, amount of water you can get out of the uh, air during the summer is uh, it's quite a lot. I can get as much as a litre out of that, air can, that uh, compressor tank at a time. So it's something that needs to be dealt with. But the machine's been reliable and I'm, I'm still happy with it. I mean, I could have spent 45 grand on a, a, on a commercial machine to be the same size. I'm not sure if I mentioned that before. This one's three metres by 1.2 metres wide. I generally use 2.4 by 1.2 metre, eight foot by four foot um, sheets on the machine. Um, so that's more than adequate. And the plasma cutter, which is a, was, as I said before, is a Hypertherm 45 XP. Um, that can cut up to 16 mil in thickness. Um, but I currently use, generally use 16 gauge, which is 1.6 mil. And that's for signs and what have you. But uh, it performs well. Um, and I don't see me changing it. There are many things I'd do better next time. Um, 2020 vision, in hindsight, is always a good thing. Uh, but it is what it is and it works for me. Thanks for your time.